news. We have a different experience. Our, our skin is different. Our experiences are different. Our language is different. How we communicate, everything. Um, so a lot of times you'll see black artists are self-taught. So when you're self-taught, you use a lot of your experiences in life to channel through your work. Here in Cleveland, you don't have to go to a museum to see and experience art. Heck, you can walk out your door, look up, and see it on the walls of buildings. Now, much of that art tells a story from a black perspective. It's one that hasn't always been shared. For decades, black artists were shut out of the art world. Well, Destination Cleveland has been actively working to right that wrong. It's created a public art passport that highlights the black experience. In this edition of the Next 400, CN New Yorker takes us on a journey right here in Cleveland. Expressions of black culture. Here on the corner of West Third and Rockwell, wide brown eyes draw you in. I painted this one in 2020 during the pandemic. Um, however, this one is called Obstruction. And it was my interpretation of how um, there are things that get in the way of seeing someone's true beauty or seeing their inner self. And so this was my interpretation of people being obstructed by stereotypes, prejudice, prejudices, how you look on the outward part and not seeing the inner beauty. So that is what this is about. Cleveland-based artist Stina Alea paints with a purpose, using her canvas to tell a story. I think um, as artists, we have a duty to spread messages and awareness through our work, especially if we have a platform. And so Destination Cleveland giving us even more of a platform is just, I think it's just amazing. In February, the Convention and Visitors Bureau created a public art passport called Expressions of Black Culture. The black community here is just such a strong part of what makes Cleveland who we are. So we really wanted to tap into that and really give people a chance to learn something new about this community, really understand the experiences and the history behind this community here in Cleveland, and um, continue to amplify these black voices. It's the first in a series, a virtual app you can pull up on your phone and see more than 35 works of art all over the city. So if you're checking it out with some friends, read through that history, read through the inspiration for the artwork and start that conversation. And we're hoping that people will take that conversation wider and start to have these conversations within the community and continue these conversations that we've already started here in Cleveland. Um, we know there's a big opportunity here and a lot of these works demonstrate some of the the difficulties that we've been de dealing with the last few years. For decades, black artists were shut out of spaces. In 2019, a William College study surveyed 18 major museums in the U.S. and found that 85.4% of the works in the collections of all major U.S. museums were created by white artists. African-American artists accounted for just 1.2% of the works, despite being 15% of the U.S. population. Fast forward to 2020 in a global pandemic and a summer of racial reckoning. Say his name, Brandon Joe! Brandon Joe! Some organizations now recognizing that disparity and trying to create opportunities to showcase black artists in and out of the museum. The last few years, the city of Cleveland has drawn a large number of visitors in part because of its public arts. And as evidenced, people, businesses, organizations are using the opportunities to share a story or two about our community. Something that Alea as a self-taught artist is taking advantage of. Her work is spotted in all corners of the city. It was just one of those like feelings of overjoy because like when you have a chance, an opportunity to, to have your art and your messages that are attached to your art, in more Clevelanders hands. I think that's really important for black artists and so I love being a part of that. This has been received really well so far and we think as we head into the summer months and it warms up, we're gonna see a lot more people start to sign up for this. And we're really hoping that people will get out into those neighborhoods, visit some of the shops, some of the restaurants that are there as they get to see this art that's on display. So we have murals, we've got sculptures, um, some statues, the um, African-American cultural garden. So a lot of really great ways for people to experience the public art scene here and learn something new. Reporting in Cleveland for the next 400. I can see myself now as I walk around the city and see different pieces of work. I see myself in it versus when there was a time where we were kind of closed out of that and you couldn't see yourself in the artwork. They didn't look like me. 
And so I think that's what I really get from being able to experience different works um, from black artists. Seeing someone doing it that looks like them is important, and I think that is also another driving force to why I want to be in the forefront. I want to have these conversations. I want my art big on, on walls because I want a little girl to walk by and say, oh, I can do that. See a New Yorker, 19 News. The 19 First Alert forecast, powered by Northeast Factory Direct. Great furniture, amazing prices. That was an amazing story put together by Sia New Yorker. And hey, this is going to be a great weekend to go out and check out some of that uh, uh, public art. Now, I will say,